Since gaining independence from the Soviet Union, Georgia has been moving closer to the West. It's been promised NATO membership and has signed a major cooperation agreement with the European Union. But it also shares a border with Russia and is in dispute with Moscow over the breakaway regions of South Ossetia and Abkhazia. I'm Andrew Hopkins and I've been speaking to the Georgian Foreign Minister, David Zalkaliani, one-on-one. -on -one. David Zalkaliani, thank you very much for talking to TRT World. This year at the World Economic Forum in Davos, the Turkish Foreign Minister said that Georgia should be given NATO membership and the reason it's not happening is because NATO is concerned about provoking Russia. Do you agree with that statement? Well, first of all, thank you very much for this opportunity to uh, speak uh, to your television and to speak about uh, uh, our relations with Turkey, which is our strategic partner and our close neighbor. And uh, regarding your question about my very close friend and colleague's assessment about Georgia's NATO integration, I fully agree with you and fully share his position that Georgia should uh, be invited as a member or Georgia should be granted the, the membership action plan. Uh, this is a well-recognized fact uh, among uh, uh, all NATO allies that Georgia is uh, one of the most advanced aspirant country uh, which uh, is fully implementing uh, all the uh, tasks for the eventual membership. It is uh, uh, the Bucharest summit decision back in 2008 uh, uh, where was a decision that Georgia will become a NATO member. Since then we are demonstrating significant progress on our way towards uh, membership um, Georgia has all practical tools for uh, the membership, the annual national program, NATO Georgia Council, the substantial NATO Georgia package, uh, and also the, uh, the very high level uh, meetings which uh, Georgia took part uh, during the last years. In addition, uh, the Georgia's place uh, as a, one of the significant contributors to the Resolute Support Mission uh, is very highly valued by our NATO partners. Georgia is the biggest per capita contributor to the Resolute Support Mission in Afghanistan. We are fighting shoulder to shoulder with our allies uh, of uh, NATO. Although we have suffered casualties, 32 Georgians died during this operation. For a small country like Georgia, it's uh, quite a significant loss. But we understand that we have to contribute to the global fight against uh, terrorism. Uh, and um, we're going to continue uh, to contribute in this uh, um, uh, common fight uh, against the, this threat. And uh, we realized that uh, uh, despite the fact that uh, for the time being there is no consensus within NATO about uh, Georgia's membership, we have to demonstrate patience and uh, we are need, not discouraged by this fact. On the contrary, with the support of our friends and allies, with the support of Turkey, statements like my colleague uh, Mevlu Cavusoglu made uh, in Davos about encouraging other NATO allies for accepting Georgia to NATO or granting Georgia membership action plan, this is really very helpful. But what do you think about the second part of the Foreign Minister's statement, that the only reason really that Georgia hasn't been become a member of NATO is because NATO is worried about provoking Russia in some way? Of course uh, we are facing uh, very serious security challenges coming from Russia and uh, it's obvious that more than 20% of our territories are under occupation as a result of war back in 2008 when Russia occupied Georgian territories of Abkhazia and Tsimbali region South Ossetia. And on a daily basis, we are facing a lot of security challenges coming from, uh, from uh, our northern neighbor. Uh, the continued process of illegal borderization is going on, installation of barbed wire fences across the occupation line. On a daily basis, we are facing serious facts of uh, violation of uh, fundamental principles of international law. But Georgia is demonstrating uh, serious responsibility by uh, not uh, reciprocating and not replying to these um, illegal and provocative activities by demonstrating consistent peaceful policy towards 
settlement of conflict by peaceful means. First of all, we are committed to the already taken commitments. We are implementing ceasefire agreements signed between Georgia and the Russian Federation in 2008. We made legally binding pledge not to use force for restoring our territorial integrity. Uh, and uh, uh, we are asking Russia Federation to reciprocate. We are constructively participating in all international frameworks dealing with the conflict settlement, including Geneva International Dialogue, where, where together with Russian Federation, we are talking in the presence of international community, with the presence of OEC, United Nations, with the presence of uh, United States and European Union about the peaceful settlement of conflict. In addition, we are putting forward very positive new peace initiatives, how to build bridges between war-torn communities and between people living on the different sides of occupation line. Georgia is moving toward the European Union and we are getting all the benefits from the process of integrating into the European Union. So we want to share all these benefits uh, from the process of the EU integration to people living on the other side based on free trade agreement with the European Union, based on getting good education in good Georgian and Western universities of people, young generation living on the other side of occupation line, and also to use the opportunity of freedom of movement, which Georgia has, has um, in the format of uh, uh, the visa a free movement in the Schengen zone countries. So this is an opportunity for people as well. So by demonstrating peaceful solution and being consistent towards the peaceful settlement of conflict, we are trying to help others, international community, to help us toward the process of integration. So we are sending right signals to international community that Georgia is committed to already taken uh, international norms and principles. So this is our policy and this is how we see this process of NATO and EU integration process should go in parallel with the restoration of territorial integrity. But how can the issue about these two territories be resolved if from your point of view you have Russia who is not abiding by international agreements, ceasefire agreements, how can this situation be sorted out? So first of all, uh, we have here uh, hope uh, for, from, for our uh, European and international partners. And uh, Turkey, first of all, which is our strongest supporter of Georgia's sovereignty and territorial integrity. In all international forums, in all international organizations, we have very vocal and explicit support from our international partners. And uh, on numerous occasions, uh, Turkey supported uh, Georgia's territorial integrity and sovereignty. Uh, so we are trying to consolidate support, first of all, to support of international, international partners in all international uh, formats, like UN Security Council, UN General Assembly, OSC ministerial meetings, Council of Europe, both formats in the Parliamentary Assembly or uh, Deputy Committee Ministers' uh, frameworks. So we are using all existing platforms and frameworks for increasing consolidation. So we want to demonstrate that the whole international community is supporting the rules-based international order and it has to be an uh, example for, for others and also to be a very strong signal to the Russian Federation that Georgia, which is committed to international norms and principles, and on the other side there are two parties of, the, of this conflict, uh, which happened back in 2008. It is a very bad legacy which we have inherited from the past, but Georgia continuously sending constructive signals to Russian Federation, to our international partners, that we are committed to the peaceful settlement of conflict. And uh, our constructive approach in Geneva talks, first of all, is a clear evidence of this. Can you give me an idea of the sort of perception of, of Russia from inside Georgia? Because it seems a, uh, it's a very uh, controversial issue, if you like. Um, there's, do you sort of look at perhaps Ukraine and you think of Crimea and something like that maybe would happen to us and I also 
understand when there were protests in uh, Georgia which started last year, it all kind of stemmed from the fact that a Russian politician came and gave a speech from the Speaker's chair in Parliament. And it seems very, as I say, very controversial, very easy to uh, get, conjure up these kind of feelings in, in Georgia. So how is Russia perceived there? So it's, uh, the relations is, you know, with the Russian Federation is a very sensitive uh, issue in Georgia, in Georgian politics. Uh, first of all, this because of the uh, fact of uh, Russian occupation of uh, Georgian territories. As I have mentioned, more than 20% of territories are still under occupation, and uh, unfortunately, the process of factual annexation and crippled occupation is still going on. And this causes a very negative um, uh, attitude uh, towards this policy of Russian Federation towards Georgia. Starting from 2012, when the new Georgian government came into power, we have completely changed the policy towards the Russian Federation. We significantly downgraded the war rhetoric, which was the case during the previous government. We have established new formats of addressing the all problematic issues vis-à-vis uh, -vis Russian Federation. But in 2012, the new Georgian government also established a sep separate channel of communication with the Russian Federation. We call it informal channel of dialogue. And the Prime Minister appointed his special representative to deal with the Russian Federation on the issues which are not related to the most problematic issues, the most burning issues which we are discussing in Geneva format. So, uh, and uh, this, the, the main idea of establishing this format was to address on the issues where we can find consensus with the Russian Federation. For example, on restoring trade, restoring people-to-people -people contact, restoring direct flights, which was stopped and suspended uh, after the war uh, with the Russian Federation. Uh, and the idea was to move forward in order to uh, reach consensus on these issues, in order to have some positive impact on the most problematic issues in our relations with the Russian Federation. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it has no positive impact on the burning issues we are discussing in Geneva. But there is slight progress, for example, on trade. Uh, we have restored trade with the Russian Federation, and now um, uh, it's, uh, the trade volume is increasing because it's an uh, important market for Georgian products. At the people-to-people -people level, we have excellent cooperation. Russia is one of the biggest uh, um, country from uh, visitors in Georgia. La last year we have, we have accomplished around, uh, the, the, we have hosted around uh, 9 million visitors for a small country like Georgia. It's a quite a significant figure. Out of 9 million, more than 1 million were, were visitors and tourists from the Russian Federation. Uh, we are not creating artificial barriers for Russians, for Russian companies to come and invest in Georgia. Uh, we are not uh, establishing visa restrictions for, for Russian citizens to visit Georgia, while Georgians need to take visa in order to enter the Russian Federation. Last year, Sergei Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, said that um, if NATO was to give Georgia membership, but only on the terms of the area that it currently controls, then we won't go to war over it, but it would affect our relations with NATO. Now that suggests to me that if it was given membership for the whole of the Georgian territory, in your view, then they would go to war over it. Is that something you are really concerned about? You know, first of all, uh, NATO, Georgia's, uh, Georgia's relations is the issue of between Georgia and the NATO. And uh, back in 2008, uh, when uh, in Bucharest uh, the decision was uh, adopted on the Georgia's membership, it clearly uh, indicates uh, that uh, NATO recognizes Georgia within its territorial integrity, within its internationally recognized borders. And this is the very clear decision of 2008 uh, Bucharest summit of NATO. Later on, when Georgia was uh, uh, recognized as an aspirant country, once again there was a reiteration that Georgia, as an aspirant, was recognized within its internationally recognized borders. And uh, this is a clear policy of NATO, 
And of course, when this uh, momentum comes, when uh, the NATO, there will be a political consensus within the, our NATO allies, of course, Georgia will accept it in NATO within its internationally recognized borders. As you mentioned uh, before, Georgia has contributed in quite a large way to NATO operations already, even though you're not yet a member and you don't have a roadmap to membership. Yeah. Uh, I think you've contributed thousands of, of soldiers yes. to various operations. Uh, you've helped participated in joint exercises, this kind of thing. And also you've suffered casualties. Because this situation is dragging on, if you like, it's taking a long time to achieve membership, do you feel uh, used in a way or taken advantage of that you're putting all this effort in to the procedure but not getting the membership back? No, as I have mentioned, the, the integration of uh, uh, Georgia to NATO and the European Union is the top foreign policy priority for Georgia, which is already reflected in the main document of Georgia, which is constitution. This is also reflected in the numerous decisions of the parliament. And also it is reflected in the main uh, program of the government, which is based on five principles. And one of the main two principles are countries' full integration into European and Euro-Atlantic structures. So as a government which is respecting the, uh, its constitution, its decision of the parliament, uh, we are following uh, this path and we are doing everything possible to move uh, closer towards uh, the membership. Uh, so this is uh, the very clear policy and uh, in addition I would like to highlight that despite the fact that uh, decision is not yet being made about Georgia's membership or granting Georgia membership action plan, the huge number of Georgian population still supports NATO integration process. According to recent polls, around 74% of the total population of Georgia is supporting Georgian NATO integration. Now your Prime Minister said at Davos also uh, a few days ago uh, that the only way for Georgia to survive in the international arena was with support from the United States and the European Union. Can you describe how that could be, how that can counter any activities that Russia may be carrying out? Yes, first of all it's true that uh, for a small country like Georgia, uh, it's uh, always uh, difficult you know, to deal with the challenges, first of all security and economic challenges we are facing on a daily basis without support of our strategic partners. And of course, uh, as Prime Minister rightly mentioned, the United States, which is uh, our main strategic partner, and the European Union, both with them, we are developing excellent cooperation. Currently, the relations with the United States is all-time high. We have association agreement with, United, uh, with the European Union, together with different, deep and comprehensive free trade agreement, which is important for diversifying our uh, markets. Uh, the, the, since signing the DCFTA, uh, we now have chance to enter 500 million European market. So we have association agreement, but we want to go beyond. We have very ambitious goals to go, go beyond and to approach the, the, the eventual goal, which is the membership. Uh, we are developing also our unilateral task and working unilaterally uh, to approach this uh, goal. Uh, recently, we have tabled for the consideration the roadmap to Europe, which is our a unilateral task and which envisaged more active participation of Georgia in to EU programs and agencies. Do you have a time frame in mind of when you would like to achieve EU uh, membership? Of course we want today, but we are not so naive to think that it will happen immediately. But uh, at the same time we are uh, looking realistically what is happening within Europe. Europe is facing its own internal challenges coming from uh, migration, coming from uh, uh, different uh, budgetary uh, issues, uh, the, uh, the recent development uh, on Brexit, and also the, some skepticism which from time to time we hear from different EU capitals on the, another wave of enlargement. Uh, so 
we hope that this open door policy towards the Western Balkans uh, uh, will uh, be uh, also keep uh, um, open for uh, Western Balkan countries the possibility to be accepted in the next wave of enlargement process. Uh, but as I have mentioned, um, there is some skepticism towards enlargement due to some internal, pro, uh, internal challenges the EU is facing, uh, but uh, we hope that uh, time will come. It seems to me from the outside that Turkey and Georgia have very good relations. Uh, they share a border. Uh, Turks don't need a passport to yes. enter Georgia. There's a lot of trade going on between the two sides. Now, if both countries were inside NATO, what do you think that would add to the organization and the world generally, the international community? Of course, it will add uh, additional strengths, additional um, strengths in the region uh, because Turkey is an important contributor to the uh, security of uh, the region in the Black Sea region. And uh, if another Black Sea country, Georgia, will be accepted uh, to NATO, it will be also beneficial for NATO as well in, in order to um, see that uh, both Turkey and uh, Georgia strengthening uh, the NATO security in the region. Uh, it, we uh, have uh, very close relations uh, with our neighbor, Turkey. We uh, have strategic partnership, and which is also translated into concrete practical dimension. Uh, a couple of years ago, the special format was established of Turkey-Georgia Strategic Partnership Council, which was already established, and we had already first meeting of the Strategic Partnership Council meeting between Georgia and Turkey. I'm very optimistic about our future uh, deep cooperation. At the moment, Georgia is a member of the Council of Europe, the international organization which promotes rule of law, democracy. And you're also now uh, the head of the committee, which basically makes the major decisions for this organization. So what are your priorities going to be while you hold this position? So it's uh, first of all, I would like to mention that it's uh, uh, enormous challenge for us and uh, enormous responsibility uh, to um, uh, chair this uh, important international organization during uh, upcoming six months. Uh, we have already started very uh, active uh, process of presidency since uh, November of last year um, when we took over the chairmanship from previous uh, presidency of France. Uh, and uh, in November, I have already presented uh, four priorities uh, for Georgian presidency. Uh, and then one of them is the uh, priority of uh, uh, we call this environment and uh, correlation of environmental uh, protection issues with the human rights protection. This is the new dimension for this organization uh, because it's, all, it's a well-known fact that uh, European Convention of uh, Human Rights does not consider the uh, environmental uh, issues and uh, there is only case law and that's why it's a completely new dimension for this organization and by encouraging discussions within this uh, organization on this direction I believe that will give new uh, impetus uh, to, to this organization. And another priority is uh, um, the encouragement of uh, civil participation in decision-making process, which is also a common um, issue and challenge for all members of the, the uh, Council of Europe uh, in the uh, European continent. And we believe that uh, the very active participation in civil society in the decision-making process uh, will help this organization uh, in future significantly to strengthen its role as an organization which is advocating human rights, democracy and the rule of law. The third one uh, is uh, uh, related to the uh, children-friendly justice system, which is a serious prob problem uh, in, on the European continent. And here we have uh, very good practice and experience the Georgian local legislation, which was already adopted, uh, can be shared. And our experience, we want to bring to the attention of the members of the Council of Europe. And it will be a good opportunity for us to share this experience with others. And the fourth dimension is the um, encouragement of democracy through 
participation, use, and uh, culture. And uh, the bringing the use dimension in the encouragement of democracy processes in, within the area of the Council of Europe, I believe also will be very useful for strengthening this organization. So these are four priorities, but of course we also will deal uh, as a chair of the, and the president of the Council of uh, Europe Deputy Committee Meters on a daily basis issues which are on a daily agenda of uh, this organization, including uh, the situation with regard of uh, unresolved conflicts in Ukraine, in Georgia and other parts of the uh, Council of Europe and uh, on a daily basis address all these uh, challenges uh, this organization is facing. Foreign Minister, thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.